professor bomik uh, good, uh, good afternoon sir professor bomik hello hello yes yeah, professor bomik can you hear me sir yeah yeah i can hear you i can hear uh, good afternoon sir welcome welcome uh, sir we are just waiting for few more participants and uh, i think we'll start uh, uh, sir i think we can start sir two minutes sir yeah yeah, yeah. let the participant uh, join and then we will start surely sir surely sir Uh, very good. good afternoon to all of you present here uh, we have uh, good, good afternoon sir so we have in our midst uh, dr subhas uh, subhas uh, bomik uh, <clears throat> professor and former head department of aerospace engineering indian institute of engineering science and technology government of india Uh, Dr. Shubhas Bhomik did his bachelor's in mechanical engineering and master's of engineering in production engineering. After post graduation, he joined Tata Steel, Jadavpur University, joint research project for the development of a robotic system for steel plant application. Sir did his uh, uh, PhD in the area of robotics from Jadavpur University. Sir is currently working as a professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering. Indian Institute of Engineering Science and Technology Shippur Sir is also a former head of head of School of Mechatronics and Robotics in IIST Shippur His research institutes interests include mechatronics robotics smart material CAD CAM industrial automation assistive devices innovative project development and BCI HMI and rural technology Sir is also a principal investigator of sponsored projects of Indo US Fabrionics, BRNS, BARC, Department of Science and Technology, AICTE, UGC, Larsen and Tobro, IEI, DST, FIST, and MHRD, National Institute of on Design in Innovation. Sir has guided uh, eight PhD theses and presently guiding three PhD scholars. Sir has published more than eighty research papers in SAI journals and conferences. two innovative products have been filed for patent sir is also a fellow of institution of engineers i member of association of machines and mechanisms robotic society of society of india and expert member rehabilitation council of india sir was also the zonal vice president of association of Mechan machines and mechanism editorial board member and presently the member of and member of robotic society of india Dr Bomik is presently acting as Dean Research and Consultancy and President Institutions Innovation Council IIAC IEST Shippur So sir will be presenting the topic of 
the era of ar and vr technological revolution underway vr and ar application areas sir welcome sir and sir i know the hand over the session to you sir thank you back to uh, thank you sri krishnan myself is uh, shubhashish bhomik i am from iist shikur howrah this institute is a very old institute and uh, this is a second oldest institute in india <clears throat> which started offering this uh, engineering degree and this institute was established in uh, 1856 so more than 160 years old institute i belongs to aerospace engineering department and also at the same time i am associated with uh, school of mechatronics and robotics background is a purely a mechanical engineer with masters in production engineering and then worked in the area of uh, mechatronics and robotics area this year here is not our uh, is uh, not our uh, field of work like okay but uh, you know that uh, one has to keep um, up to date whenever the technology changes so this compelled us at least it compelled me uh, to be involved in some other areas of research areas which are contemporary uh, with the field of robotics or mechatronics and in that respect this ar and the vr technology augmented reality and the virtual reality is really a field uh, which needs contribution uh, from all the disciplines and the most probably from yesterday's lecture and from today's lecture you actually came to know that this ar and the vr technology okay it has a tremendous application potential market potential so from that perspective it is necessary that the faculty members and the students community engineering community practically they should have an exposure to this particular subject area and now under this pandemic situations we are all working from home and now we understand that the the real picture that if we are unable to do any practical uh, laboratory kind of work then how to compensate it what is the alternative so during this one and a half year probably we came to know that we have no other options but to take the help of computer engineering or take the help of computer science and the associated technology for teaching learning process so from that perspective we can say that for the last 2 years people are using more and more they are working more and more in the area of ar and the vr technology so with this introduction <clears throat> let us move into the actual field of ar and the vr and ar and the vr technology more or less you may have been introduced to this particular subject so whatever i will go through i will quickly go through Uh, from the definitions uh, towards its applications and uh, after that what i thought that uh, as this is a practice based subject you have to develop something like okay so the lectures are only for the introduction part only to understand that what the technology is but unless and until the participants gets an hands on exercise or hands on experience in developing ear wear concept or to solve an applications 
unless and until they solve a problem. It is very difficult to understand that how this AR and the VR technology, it actually works. And whatever generally we do, that is a, we are the end user type. We do not know that how it has been developed. Somebody has developed it. We are just only using this technology. But we have to remember that someone of us will have the responsibility to create an application in the field of AR and the VR. And the question arises that how such type of applications can be built, actually built. So I will take maybe for a certain portions, half of the time I will take for the introductions of this particular subject. And then we will move into the hands-on kind of demonstration kind of uh, sessions where I have with me one of my PhD scholar and uh, he is working to some extent, he is also working in the area of AR and the VR development. So he will take up this subject and he will demonstrate that how this AR and the VR model can be developed. And for that purposes, we will use one software tool, which is known as Viewporia. Along with that, we will uh, take the help of Unity 3D. So with the help of this Unity 3D and Viewporia software tools, how we can make simple models, simple applications in the field of VR and the VR. And then we will extend it further tomorrow. We will develop Android-based VR and the VR applications. We will try to demonstrate your haptic devices, which is also very much important and relevant with the field of the AR and the VR. So more or less, you can say that the theory portions will be there in our talk, but mostly it will be of demonstration type, a practice-based one, so that the participants will be able to understand that how these AR and the VR models applications can be developed. And these applications are, though it should be of a very small applications, but uh, these applications will demonstrate the capability of this AR and the VR in a smaller form. So the title of the talk is The Era of Virtual Reality and Augmented Reality. Technological revolutions underway. There are a few pictures are placed. Okay. And bottom of this uh, title, whatever the pictures are shown over here. So that is the Institute pictures. Okay. And uh, then at the bottom, there are some uh, few symbolic representations of AR and the VR images are placed. Before we go into this AR and the VR, the basic concept of it, this is very important that the era that we are moving is basically infographics. That means it's known as an information in the form of graphics. And generally we call these infographics as the future of virtual reality. So if you are a regular followers of technological trends, then probably we will get accustomed with few words like immersive technology, mixed reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality. So there are different types of reality names we came across in our daily understandings of this particular subject of virtual reality. So whatever may be the form, whatever the flavor of alphabet soup strikes you fantastic. We are disrupting every industry out there. And that's the good things to be discussed in these details is nothing but 
infographics. So the name is different. There are different names are available in the, in the technology, mixed reality, augmented reality, extended reality, virtual reality, but everything is part of one technology, which is known as a infographics. So practically, whenever we are talking about this air and the wear, we are actually talking about this information graphics. Graphics forms the information in the form of graphics is represented in this subject. This picture is the left hand side picture is very well known to you by this time. But if you see the right hand picture, a boy is sitting very near to a television set. Now the question arises that is it not possible to see the picture from the television from a certain distance? Why the, the boy is very near to the television set? The children child is very near to the television set. And this is, there is no other reasons. But the point is that the boy is placed himself very near to the television set so that he can immersively see whatever is shown on the TV set. So that means this is known as a immersivity. So unless and until we involve very deeply with our environment, or unless and until we attach ourselves, involve ourselves with the environment, we feel that as if we are not able to grasp what is actually happening. Or sometimes we will say, for example, uh, there is a cricket match showing on the TV set. Unless and until we sit very near to the TV set, we do not, we feel that I'm outside of the cricket match. To involve myself with the cricket match, what is happening, I want that I must be placed inside the TV set. So from that perspective, the augmented reality or the virtual reality concept has came into market. This virtual reality or augmented reality is basically it is a disruptive technology. So a lot of changes, it's, it means a lot of changes has happened with the introductions of this here and the VR technology. And we call a technology as a disruptive technology. When it is something different, something new, completely new, it's not a delta amount of improvement of an existing technology. And here and the wear is a technology. Its magnitude, its impact is such. You cannot get it with a micro level of development of a technological concept. So from the picture on the right hand side picture, as the person, as the, as the boy is trying to enter inside the TV set. Now the question arises that whether it is possible to bring the TV set on the top of the eyes of the person, top of the eyes of the boy. Is, it, is there any methodology or the technology is there by which we can bring the total TV set placed on the eye itself. So it's a kind of attachment. Whether we can attach it with the eye, eye portions of the person. So from that perspective, we have the ear here setup. So extremely interactive, fun field and refreshing improves collaborative learning, better connections with the human. These are the, we can say that these are the adjectives or these are the properties which can be introduced, which has been introduced 
with the concept of fear and the beer. So just seeing through the eyes only, open eyes only of a television set does not give some experience which a boy is looking for and which is possible to bring with the help of a head mounted kind of display unit which is placed very near to the eye and if the person looks at that one he or she will find himself involved very actively involved deeply involved with the situation which is shown on the monitor so seeing is not believing in virtual reality seeing is not believing in the virtual reality but virtual reality is basically it begins with the seeing so whatever we see through the virtual reality definitely it is virtual it is not real but all kind of virtual reality it begins with the seeing of the environment i'm not going into this kind of part um there are different types of virtual reality um art there like a simulation based on virtual reality avatar image based virtual reality projections based virtual reality desktop primary based virtual reality head mounted kind of display units virtual reality concept non immersive simulations semi immersive simulations and fully immersive simulations in that if i see the application site where we generally find the applications of virtual reality so we can say that virtual reality is everywhere it is present in the healthcare it is present in the human simulation software development a kind of diagnosis virtual robotic surgery virtual reality in the movie part in military applications so everywhere it is there so the virtual reality it is a psychophysics based technology definitely it has engineering and engineering is basically it's a physics based engineering as well as it involves the psychology so the virtual reality is basically unless and until you set your mind properly probably you will also not be able to enjoy the real benefits of air and the beer so whenever you are observing an air and the beer environment or you involve yourself with the air and the beer applications psychologically you set your mind properly so that you can involve yourself you can feel yourself that you are 100% or more than 100% you are involved with the environment so it uses the software to generate the realistic image sound and the other sensations that replicate the real world environment so the virtual reality or the augmented reality whatever may be it not only involves generating of images that means whatever we are finding in a virtual form it is not only the involvement of image but also at the same time we are working with the sound and other kind of sensations that replicate the real world environment sound it plays a very important role whenever you are in a virtual environment if you just see a picture that means if you are seeing only images only your involvement will be of 50% unless and until you are able to hear something say for example you are walking through a forest you can see the images images of the forest but unless and until you have the peculiar sound which is coming from the inside of the forest from the deep of the forest if you are not able to get this sound you will not feel 
that as if you will not feel that actually you are present in a forest environment. So the sound plays a very, very important, crucial role in all our virtual reality applications along with the images. And there are other sensations out there, like temperatures. Say, for example, you have entered into a room. You are thinking that you are entering into a room whose temperature is below the normal, normal temperatures. Like. So you must feel cold. Like. So if I want to create this in a virtual form, in a virtual environmental form, I must have a, a blower units which will blow the cold air. And then only if you are observing, if I'm observing a environment if, uh, or the environment of air and the bare environment, I must feel the cold breeze of air flow. Then only I will feel that I am in a, actually I am as if I am in a real environment, though I am in the virtual. So virtually everything is created. This cold breeze air flow is created artificially. And unless until it is artificially created, it cannot, uh, cannot create an impression in your mind that you are in a, in a, in a cold uh, environment. Virtual reality refers to a high-end user interface that involves a real-time simulations and interactions through the multiple sensory channels. The real life simulations. Sometimes the simulations may be if it is not a real life time. Real life means it's a real time. Real life it means here it is a real time. So whenever in case of a computer, say for example, I just move the mouse and immediately the movement of the mouse is not reflected. After some time, if it is if the reflection takes place a good amount of time, then I will feel that the total system is not working in a real time basis. So in case of a virtual reality environment, virtual reality systems, it will behave virtually or properly. A person will feel that he is in the air in the VR environment when some input that the input that the person is given to the systems, immediately if the systems responds, then only it seems to be to the person that he, is, he or she is in a virtual environment. So this is from the computational point of view. The, whatever the hardware we will consider. So that hardware must work in a real time basis. So that is the objective of saying. Okay. So a user can interact and manipulate with the virtual objects of virtual world with the help of specialized devices like display screens and other devices. So there will be kind of some kind of input and the output devices, input on the output. This is basically a computer oriented. This, these are the uh, words which is uh, used in a computer science or uh, this input and the output is basically used also in the electronics field. Okay, So input and the output, it means that there are some input devices, there are some output devices and there is a processing unit. So in case of a virtual reality, we require some input devices we require some output devices and also we require the processing unit which will process the input and create the output. This is the replications of reality, real or created, which runs on a computer systems. So this is basically a replications of reality. It's a replications. It's not a real, it's a replications of the real. Real or it is created. So sometimes we can have a real systems or sometimes we may have a created systems. So we will find in case of, say, for example, in case of an augmented reality, something real is present on the real systems. We are augmented some virtual objects. And that's why the name is augmented reality. But in case of a virtual reality systems, everything is virtual. There is no concept of real. But the virtual thing says, looks like a so real that you will be able to distinguish which one is real and which one is virtual. I'm not showing this part. Okay. And um, a person is using a virtual reality equipment is typically able to look around the artificial world. Virtual realities are displayed either in a computer monitor or a projector screens or with a virtual reality headset. Explore the world from the total, uh, totally new perspectives. Okay. 
stroll the streets of the Tokyo, soar over the yes mitt, or teleport the across the globe. Like so, you can move to anywhere. You can move to everywhere in the world. Okay. And you can you can create a dream environment of your dream environment, and you can walk through your dream environment also. So at the very beginning, the first slide, the title slides, it contains a lady is working in an environment which is artificially created. It's a virtual environment, a virtual sky, okay, virtual stars, virtual trees, and a virtual object is moving. The virtual lady is moving through these environments if i see the history of this virtual reality if the virtual reality is not a very new uh, new word it has been introduced in the 1950s where the flight simulators were built by the us air force and they used this concept of virtual reality to train their uh, pilots and in 1965, a research program for the computer graphics called the Ultimate Display, it was laid out in 1965. 1988, commercially developed VR systems began. And in 1991, the first commercially entertainment VR systems, virtuality, it was released in the market. So you see that from 90s, 50, this concept of virtuality or the augmented reality it, it, it was uh, floated long back. And now in 90s, uh, in 20s, okay, we are finding the full flow or full growth of virtual reality. This is the, these diagrams, it shows that in one hand we have a real environment on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have a virtual environment and we are now moving from the real environment to the virtual environment and during this we have crossed the augmented reality path augmented reality and then we are moving towards the virtual environment more towards the virtual environment and we have virtual reality in the picture so the from the real environment we move to augmented reality. From there, we move into augmented virtuality. And then from the augmented virtuality, we moved into the virtual environment. So this is basically the transformations from the real environment to the virtual environment takes place, how the, uh, how the transformations is taking place. This is one uh, example that a person is um, doing kind of some kind of maintenance kind of work or some kind of inspection kind of work for an automobile. And you can see that the person is real and whatever the picture is shown, the vehicle. So that vehicle is also real. And we can see that on the screen, on the real environment, at the four end of the real, uh, real uh, uh, image of the vehicle, there are few graphics oriented informations are displayed. So there is one red object is there. We call it as a pointer. One is red pointer, another is the green pointer. And there are four circles are placed. Now this is called as, this environment is called as augmented reality, or sometimes it is also called as a mixed reality. So an augmented reality, it generates a composite view of the users. Composite bit view means here that it is it contains the real as well as it contains the imaginary information so image imaginary informations or the virtual informations. So it is a combination of the real 
real skin viewed by the user or the virtual skin generated by the computer that augments the skin with the additional information so also what is the additional information we are getting from here now you can see that there are four not bolts are placed at some locations and the observer is looking for that the locations of these four not bolts where the four not bolts are placed maybe the user has the intention to remove a part from the engine side remove some parts remove some components and he is looking that how the parts of the components has been attached with the body of the vehicle now he is taking the help of this virtual reality so with certain inputs he has to give some inputs with certain inputs given by the operator the positions of the four nut bolt which has been attached with that particular object it will be shown as if it has been superimposed on the actual image of the object so on the the head for uh, that is the 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 head mounted display unit that is where by the person on that particular screen on that particular object means uh, device there are four holes will come picture of four holes will be there and these are the graphics locations is the graph graphical locations of the object so it is a basically it is a circle so four circles will be placed and some write up will appear like here for example see here in this case it is written like please unfix the scrubs here to remove the covering so to remove some covering you require to uh, it require to uh, unscrew some devices unscrew it and it is showing where the screws are located and the person can very easily he can detect the location of the screw and ultimately he can he can he can remove the screws from the attached parts and in that way the part may be removed from the parent body so we can say the person is taking the help of this augmented reality or the person is taking the help of the virtual reality whenever the person is doing certain kind of inspection operations or certain kind of uh, assembly operations or dismantling operations whenever the person is doing he is taking the help of this the virtual reality or the augmented reality so here in this case the person need not to remember that how that particular parts needs to be removed so within a fraction of a second within a click he can get the informations that how a particular part or the components can be removed from its original locations so that is the beauty and this augmented reality or the virtual reality concept is now um, the industry people are taking for the training of their engineers for the training of their engineers they are taking the help of this concept and with this concept now during this pandemic situations we know that that the industry is also hiring the engineers the industry also uh, hiring the graduates the fresh graduates and the fresh graduates they are sitting in their home that's when they are doing the work from home like they have not joined in the industry but still the industry is paying them because they are giving them the training and the person is getting the training and all kind of examinations training process is going on as if it's it's a is a offline process like and industry is taking the help of this air and the vr concept for giving the training to the to the training engineers so the seamless merging of the real space and the virtual space is possible integrate the computer generated virtual objects into the physical world which becomes in a sense an equal part of our natural environment this is known as distributed peer virtual reality but it is distributed so that means the same object is now viewed by the different people located at different different places 
but they are all viewing the same objects so the virtual object is completely is a virtual object but instead of a single person there are many people involved in this distributed peer where all the people people are located at different different places but they are observing the same image they are observing the same virtual model and this is known as a virtual reality and nowadays say for example the meetings are place meetings are taking place people are at location different different locations and whenever they are discussing about any any features any engineering or non engineering features they are taking this help of this virtual reality so all are using the head mounted display units all are sharing the same informations the same cad model or the graphics models or the virtual model all are sharing it so that whenever a person is saying something the other person should be able to understand what the other people is saying or what the other people is explaining and that is the beauty of this distributed beer systems i think that this has been already covered by the uh, by the previous speakers okay and this is the part of this hardware and this hardware is uh, initially you can see that one hardware is known as a, a google cardboard and this is very famous one okay and one can also build up this uh, google hardware means uh, google cardboard type of devices and uh, uh, this is very less within a uh, uh, within a few rupees only it is possible to make it's possible to build up and otherwise one has to uh, go through the sophisticated kind of vr set sets okay and uh, so uh, this technology actually you can see that uh, this hardware devices is a costly one okay the questions arises that how why this ar and the vr technology is now so popular to us is not that much a popular to us still because of the facts of its hardware cost of the hardware and this these systems are very costly and that's why it is not possible also to provide all this kind of hardware setups in an academic institute also even for our teaching learning process this creates a hurdle for the students as well as for the institute or as well as for the faculty members also because this is our all costly so unless and until we can bring the cost of these hardware setups we will not be able to make this air and the beer popular among the users there are different types of uh, head mounted kind of display units are there and people are still they are all the people are working throughout the globe how to bring more sophisticated ar vr systems head mounted kind of displays with a lot of input output features and look wise also uh, you can see that uh, previously the look of this uh, this head mounted display when it was quite cumbersome quite bulky and now the people has developed the scientists and the engineers has developed a head mounted kind of display units it's just it looks like a like a spec a very simple type of spec only so uh, and is this is very light and it has a lot of features inside it which may not be available with the head mounted display okay of uh, of uh, means uh, higher dimensions a head mounted type of display unit it may not have that much of features which is now available in the simple um, uh, spec type of head mounted display units so nowadays also the people are using not only the computers not only the head mounted display units but uh, they are also using a mobile phone as a display device for this ear and the beard so you can see on the right hand side top side the people are using uh, uh, computer systems computer monitors for this uh, for the display purposes and now on the left hand side you can see that the only a mobile handset they are using it as a ear display image so to put it simply the ear works by displaying deploying the virtual images over the real world objects the overlay is executed immediately with the input received from a camera or another input another kind of input devices like the smart glasses hence ar technology brings uh, virtual objects into the surrounding environments so surrounding environments you can see that uh, uh, that the environment 
means here in the VR concept, it is bringing, bringing this virtual reality in a real world. So on the left hand side, you can see that the person is holding a camera unit, okay, a mobile camera unit, and whatever the image he is capturing or he is uh, looking at, this is a but this is a uh, real objects, real images. But on these real images, he will put the virtual objects to make it more meaningful. These are the different uh, type of uh, uh, display, uh, head mounted kind of display units. Okay, earlier it was this kind of devices was used earlier, but nowadays as these head mounted displays are uh, becoming more and more cheaper and it is well available. So that's why this kind of bigger kind of systems, okay, heavier systems, people are not using it. But still, we can say that uh, this is uh, binocular omni orientation monitors. This is known as a boom. And uh, it can be placed near to the eye, okay. And uh, with the help of the hand movements, okay, uh, it has a kind of four bar kind of mechanisms. So as uh, you uh, most probably this, this is organized by the mechanical department. So I understand that people understand the, what is known as uh, four bar mechanisms. So kind of mechanism is used for moving this uh, eyepieces, okay, movement of the eyepieces so that the person can look uh, at 360 degree uh, in, an, in the environment. This is, uh, this is one of the input devices. Okay, there are different types of inputs, uh, input devices are there by which a person can provide necessary instructions to the air and the VR systems. And one of them is the data gloves, okay? And actually you have to give some sort of instructions. The question is that how you will give the instructions to the virtual objects or real or augmented reality objects or the virtual reality objects? Because you have to work with your uh, environment in an interactive way, how to make the systems more and more interactive. So to make the systems more and more interactive, you can use some sort of input devices. Okay, so the input devices here, we are showing one input devices, which is known as a data gloves. So it is basically, it is a glass. It looks like a glass, but uh, this is an electronics glass. This is not a normal gloves that we generally uh, put in your hands during the winter sessions. It is an electronics glass. And the beauty of these electronics gloves is that whenever you move your, your hands or your fingers, if you move your fingers, okay, the electronics gloves can understand that what is your movement? What is your intention of your hand movement? So say for example, if I do like this, or if I do like this, or if I do like this, it has a meaning. So I can decode the meaning of my hand movement using these data gloves. So if I, if I wear these data gloves and if I do like this, this maybe these informations, maybe that I like to zoom the environment. I like to zoom in. And if I move my fingers like this, I want to zoom out. I want to do the unzooming process. Okay. So this kind of instructions I can give it with the help of this data gloves. So data gloves is used as one of the input devices uh, uh, for, for the AR and the VR systems. Like the AR and the VR systems, you can operate with the help of a mouse only. By just simple, by the use of this mouse only, also, I can give the necessary instructions to my AR and the VR systems. But that will not be a very realistic exposures or experiences. We want something real, something realistic. And this realistic will be if I wear these data gloves and if I operate my fingers, then it, my information, sending of the information to my virtual or the augmented reality systems will be more and more interactive way, more and more interactive, more and more natural. Okay. So uh, we want to uh, use devices which works more naturally. So I have uh, with me, I have uh, one uh, data gloves with me. Okay. So this is known as a data gloves, electronics gloves. Okay. And one has to wear these electronics gloves. I have to wear it. And electronically, you can see that electronically, I can connect with, with some, uh, with the computer systems, I can connect this total device. Okay. 
and if i connect it with the total device then then it indicates that whenever i move my fingers like this or if i move my fingers like this it has a different meaning to the computer the computer will be able to understand what is the meaning when my all the fingers are stretched and what is the meaning when all my fingers are closed so it has a different meaning to the computer systems and wherever the computer will be able to decode my hand movement the necessary instructions will be provided to my ear and the wear system so the, so that the ear and the wear systems will automatically respond in that way like this is another control device it's like i push button type okay so if i push one button then that will give an indications or the informations to the ear and the wear systems and accordingly the ear wear systems will work now i also have some sort of device which is known as a joystick so it's a very simple one everybody has seen this kind of devices okay but this is a this is known as a joystick and this joystick is basically used by the children for playing the video games and this joystick is basically it will be connected to the computers so with the help of these joysticks also you can control the environment okay so you can move the move the joysticks in the left hand side you can move the joystick in the right hand side you can move the joystick in the front at the back you can rotate the joysticks also so this is acting as an input device from the operator to the machines and here your machines is basically the ear and the wear systems so if i am uh, holding this device input devices and i am operating my input devices that means with the help of this device i can give the necessary instructions to my ear and the wear applications and then the ear and the wear applications will act accordingly it will act accordingly so this in, this is also considered as a input devices so now i think uh, this uh, this input device what is mean by the input device uh, for a uh, for the ear and the wear systems that is clear now ear and the wear technology is not only only it depends upon the hardware but it depends upon the software and there are software lot of software tools are available okay there are tool kits are there and these two kits kits can be uh, written in c c++ you can write it there are some software packages are there like multiverse virtual reality studio sense8 world toolkit autodesk uh, cyberspace development so these are the uh, known as a software uh, already developed by the developers which can be used for development of the ar and the vr systems there are certain vr software tools are there also means standard software are there uh, which is known as vrml virtual reality modeling language okay so this is vrml this is a software tools which can be used and there are other softwares like unity 3d okay or uh, virtual reality experimental platforms which is known as a vray vray is a software name of a software virtual reality modeling language vrml wavers this is also one software and gejbo i think uh, uh, maybe uh, some of you have heard the name of gejbo so this is also a uh, graphics based software tools which can be used for virtual reality uh, development of the virtual reality environment so uh, this uh, one software which i am uh, telling you which is known as a vrep so vrep software is i think it is uh, uh, it is available free of cost okay so you can download this virtual reality experimental uh, softwares platforms vrep softwares and you can develop your model so all the software tools like unity 3d vrep sir can you type in uh, uh, message box uh, which software it is a free version it is available are these uh, remaining uh, whatever it you shown to here right all these are related to uh, uh, paid versions i mean uh, prime for primary no, 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 this is all paid i think it is all paid Okay. and the uh, virtual reality experimentation well, platforms vrep so this vrep is uh, uh, this is a uh, free version vrep is free what are v you v r uh, uh, second one vrep v r e p okay vrep okay okay vrep okay sir okay so this is this version is a means this particular software is okay. uh, available free of cost okay, okay sir and uh, you can see that uh, i have placed uh, uh, 
just images of few software tools okay so it indicates that all these softwares it can be used basically for making the model development of the model development of the realistic model on the left hand side you can see a robotic a robot type okay so this is a small uh, cad model software tools which shows the image is basically it shows a robot model okay now the thing is that all the software they will build up the environment virtual environment they will build up and uh, means uh, the quality the quality through which you can make these all these model environment okay so that is that is uh, that, that is your concern right so some of the software tools may not make that environment which looks like a real but there are certain software tools which will make the environment as if uh, it looks like a 100% like a real environment okay so uh, so uh, depending upon that you have to select your model means cat software tools I will uh, like what where these virtual reality, augmented reality, this can be used like games, lasers, entertainment purposes, e-commerce development, interior designs, real estate, tourism and travel. Uh, uh, people are using this uh, AR VR concept for the tourism and travel in a bigger form, in a bigger. And people say that uh, means uh, the business in this particular area. Tourism and the travel, okay, uh, it will be huge uh, in case of air and the beer. Means application of the air and the beer for tourism and travel, and education and training, okay, healthcare. So these are the tremendous potential. And whatever the level nowadays we see in the field of air and beer, people are people are saying that this is nothing like, okay, ten percent or twenty percent of this air and the beer capability. Uh, still we could uh, uh, unfold okay so 80 percent still it is remain in the research lab or people are thinking means people are dreaming and uh, as more as the people that will work in this particular area uh, then they will have more and more dream and once the people will have a dream so they will try to make the dream into the act Uh, sir, can you also suggest uh, suggest us that uh, what is the minimum requirements for the uh, PC we have to maintain to run this uh, software uh, for the practice purpose also as a student? Okay. As uh, a student means whatever we will show today. Okay. Yeah. So this kind of applications you can build up with the normal PC. If you have a i5, then that's fine. No problem. Okay. 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 But only thing is that whenever you wants to make a bigger one means bigger applications. Okay, and uh, you want some sort of rendering, and the graphics must must be very perfect type of graphics. Okay, so at that time only you require a huge amount of memory. Otherwise, a normal i5 with uh, maybe eight GB of RAM. For only time there are uh, That is that is sufficient for the normal. Made in, made in. I will show you. Sir, when I'm trying to search in VREP, it's uh, retrieving to uh, Copilar uh, Copilar uh, Robotics uh, .com. It is retrieving. Is that, that uh, is, green color pack. is this actual site for uh, download the VREP? Uh, Copilar. I have to check it then. Copilar I... Robotics. I have to check. I have to check. I have to yeah, check. Yeah, please confirm me that one. I will. I will. Here it shows the market of here and the bigger market, and uh, you can see that uh, market is tremendous market. Okay, healthcare, engineering, real estate, retail, military, education purposes, uh, whatever it was shown over here. You can find here that uh, video games, live live events, video entertainment purposes. So these are the maximum area in which the here and the bigger will find its applications more and more applications. I will just uh, I will end up today with one examples, like the uh, like how this ear and the wear concept is used in the medical. Field. Okay, so medical applications for the uh, 
medical applications how this air and the air concept is used now you can see that uh, this is a uh, uh, this is one environment okay uh, and uh, this is basically for medical treatment purposes so a person is there there is a person okay and uh, he is located in some remote area remote place or and uh, uh, he he has some personal problem what uh, he does not wants to share it with a real uh, with the real doctors or maybe the with the real caregivers okay so he wants to keep the problems okay restricted in himself but also at the same time he wants to get treatment now the question is how this ear and the wear concept can be used now right hand side you can see a virtual dummy objects or dummy a uh, caregivers okay on the left hand side you can see the image of the persons and that is the real image and uh, the person is located in a uh, in a environment which contains the ear wear devices and on the right hand side that lady is a virtual object is not a real object and she is a caregiver now whenever the person is placed in front of the ear and the wear systems and the persons explain his problems psychological problems at that time there are different sensors are placed in front of the person it captures the uh, informations captures certain informations of the persons so what are these informations the informations may contains the movement of the lips how much the lips are moved how much the lips are open it can contain the informations how the body getting smoothed what is the body movement how much the person is moving towards the left hand side and the right hand side how much the person has moved his body towards the forward directions and the backward directions what is the movement of the eyes so all these informations are captured by a camera unit which is placed in a in a environment where the person is seated and then these informations are directly it is transferred to the caregivers the dummy caregivers the virtual caregivers and the virtual caregivers she can understand the situation of the person and accordingly the advice is provided to the person so here the person need not to explain his problems a personal problems to an another person another real person but he is taking the help of this virtual reality to explain his own problems to a virtual objects a virtual dummy objects and the virtual dummy objects will talk with the person as if the real objects or the real human and all sorts of necessary instructions or the advice will be provided to the person who is suffering from some mental distress so this is one application so what i will show i will i will quickly i will play with a video which indicates that this how this virtual reality concept has been implemented for treatment of the patients give me a time i will play that one just a minute please yeah oh thanks 
begin today. I was created to talk to people in a care environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask you any questions just to get me. started. And please feel free to tell me anything. Your answers are totally confidential. Are you okay with this? Is it visible? Yes. So, hello. Today? Is it visible? I'm doing well. That's good. Where are you from originally? Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, I'm from LA myself. When was the last time you felt really happy? Uh, when was the last time? Hmm. So the mental state know. of the person is understood. I'm not someone who's really like, I don't have any real high highs. I feel like I'm a level person. It's just happy. I guess to answer your question. Sir, I'm seeing only PDF, sir. Probably. PDF, okay. Uh, PDF screen only. Probably. I will just close this PDF screen. Then. I noticed you were hesitant on that one. Would you say you are generally a happy person? I'm generally happy. It's just lately there are, there are things. Just keeping me down. I Can think it's not coming. When you clicking on the share, the uh, you can click on the desktop option, then it will be shared at whatever it you are showing. Hi, I'm Ellie. Thanks for coming in today. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn. Yeah, now now it's coming. Now, now it's coming. So I'm yes, saying sir. from the very beginning. Uh, again, it's going to the... Okay. Hi, yeah. I'm Ali. Thanks for coming in today. I was created to talk to people in a safe and secure environment. I'm not a therapist, but I'm here to learn about people and would love to learn about you. I'll ask a few questions to get You just started. see at the bottom, there is a picture. Small picture is there with the green yes. colors. Totally okay, confident. so that is basically okay a camera is capturing the body movement. Yes. So and uh, this green today? colored one, it indicates the two legs, two, uh, and the That's two good. hands and the head. And uh, from the from image, originally? it is capturing and from the image, it is trying but to find Los out Angeles. what is the movement of the hands oh, and I'm what is the movement myself. of the leg. When was the last time you felt really happy? Uh, when was the last time? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not someone who's really like, I don't have any real high highs. I feel like I'm a level person. It's just happy. I guess to answer your question, Probably, probably a couple months ago. I noticed you were hesitant on that one. Would you say you were generally a happy person? I'm generally happy. It's just lately there are, there are things just keeping me down. Can you tell me more about that? When was the last time you felt really happy? Um, but I try to stay happy. Um, I, I'd rather be happy. Uh, my kids keep me going. What advice would you have given yourself 10 or 20 years ago? Um, to uh, to not believe, uh, to, to, to not be so gullible, to not be so gullible. So just see the different information that um, is captured on the screen. I, I've been told recently. The green colored one, the I virtual gauge, horizontal gauge, smile level, speaking fractals, readily, uh, mouth opening, 
and the body movements. So from all these, uh, it is trying to find out the mental result, state of the person. Um, I, uh, recently, I've really, I, I've gotten myself in a lot of trouble. Um, and so I think that looking back, if I could have, I would tell myself um, to, to not believe, to not be so stupid um, and to think uh, and just, just not, to not be so gullible. Uh, Is it uncomfortable for you to talk about this? Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I, I hadn't really thought about that. So uh, this is an example that uh, how this air and the wear is used in the medical field for treatment of the patients. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the thing is that there are a lot of uh, sensors are there which are placed in the environment which captures all the information about the person's state of mind, and from there the uh, the actual remedy okay is offered by the caregivers. So. I will, in the next, uh, means tomorrow, I will show some of the videos again, which will uh, clear the ideas of this air in the VR applications. It's potential, the uh, potential field where this air in the VR can find its applications. So uh, now I request uh, uh, Shaptak Bhattacharya to start his demonstration sessions. Okay, he's a kind of hands-on. He will demonstrate, he will develop something and he will show you that how the before your softwares and uh, the unity 3 d softwares, they will help in building the virtual uh, virtual reality models. So over to Shabda. Thank you, sir. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So let me start with my presentation. So I request uh, the host to enable screen sharing for me. Yeah. Please allow Shaptak to share the screen. Organizers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shabta, can you can you share it right now? No, no, uh, no. The message is coming. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Hello, Dr. Sikishnan. Hello. Sir, can you hold for a minute, sir? I'll just say clarify. Sir, please. Sorry for the inconvenience.
yes now the option is coming thank you thank you get it now sir you can yeah, do yeah. it thank you thank you so i hope my screen is visible sir yes sir okay so okay so today i'll be discussing on marker based augmented reality application development now if we we consider the applications it can be of two types one is marker based and another one is marker less so generally in indoor conditions we use marker based augmented reality uh, applications so what are they that means there will be a marker or a target image which will be detected by the ar application or the device which is running the ar application and whenever that marker or the target image is detected a virtual model will be superimposed on the marker to make the augmented reality application successful so where this type of application we use so where uh, we are using this type of application so suppose we consider there is a robot uh, which is acting as a receptionist uh, and uh, or there may be home service robots so which will require indoor navigations so it will move around the house or a room uh, in those cases as well as in warehousing where multiple robots are being used for collecting the objects and delivering them into specific uh, conveyors in those cases also in uh, uh, industrial warehouse automation people are using this type of marker based augmented reality so anything where we are using the robot is uh, robot is trying to find uh, robot is trying to find a marker or to navigate inside a room there this marker based augmented reality application is used moreover in case of industry 4.0 uh, there is that if a marker is uh, uh, placed and each and every machine on in and each and every machine so whenever a personnel who is wearing the ar glass uh, is basically looking on the marker so he or she will be uh, able to visualize the whole training or training uh, lessons or everything simulations everything so uh, marker based augmented reality application so let us start now this will be the content of my presentation so i was telling us there will be a target image just let me reposition this one so your mic is muted aha uh -huh. i have one so this is the target image which i will be using as a marker that means whenever the ar application will detect this particular marker it will superimpose a virtual object to make it augmented reality right so this is a marker image i have taken uh, from a drawing copy which was which was in my home So I have just taken the front picture of the drawing copy. So we can use any target image uh, we like. Now, this AR application will consist of two sections. One will be dealing with the development of AR application, AR environment models, virtual models. So we will develop the virtual models and AR environment in Unity 3D. software now unity 3d software is a very popular software so unity 3d is basically were earlier used for developing video games nowadays it is being used for developing vr applications now the best part of unity 3d is it provides many features like android app development or pc based application development you can, we can develop an android app and uh, we can run an ar application so all those things are inside unity 3d 
there are customized models and customized environments in Unity 3D, uh, which we can use for our AR application development. And the best part of Unity 3D is that the commercial version of Unity 3D is paid. But if we want to develop, if we want to learn and develop some AR application for our own purposes, uh, for teaching purposes or learning purposes, Unity 3D software is completely free. So we can download the Unity 3D software from the internet and we can develop our own AR applications. Now, the other part is that I'm telling that the computer will be detecting this target image. That means the computer recognizes, will recognize this particular image and it will not get confused with other images. So in real environment, so we are developing an AR. So what is the scenario? The scenario is in real environment, there will be a target image. And if I am running the AR application in my mobile, maybe Android or iOS, then the phone, whenever the phone camera detects that particular target image in the AR app, a virtual, virtual model will be superimposed on this target image in the DL. So on the real time video feed, a virtual object is superimposed. That means the AR, inside the AR application, there is something which helps the algorithm or the phone camera to recognize this particular target image. Now, how the computer understands this particular image? So this is basically done with image processing and computer vision algorithms. Now, we can write our own image processing and computer vision algorithms in Unity 3D to, so as to detect a particular marker or they are, are customized softwares which are running, which are having very powerful, very uh, uh, powerful uh, computer vision algorithms, which we can use for free. One such software is known as Viewphoria. Now, Viewphoria is a, mar the, a marker recognition software. Now, this Viewphoria augmented reality SDK. It comes in the uh, form of SDK or Software Development Kit. So, Viewphoria is an augmented reality software development kit for mobile devices that enables the creation of augmented reality applications. It uses computer vision technology to recognize and track planar images or 2D images as well as 3G, 3D objects in real time. That means Euphoria can track 2D images, just I have shown you the marker image like that one, a 2D image or a planar image, or it can also track 3D objects. It can also recognize 3D objects in real time. Now this image registration capability enables developers to position and orient virtual objects such as 3D models and other media. Now, image registration is a very important component of AR and VR. So what does that mean? That means whenever the particular marker is detected, not only that particular marker is recognized, but also the position as well as orientation of that particular marker is also detected so that if the marker orientation or the position changes, the computer vision algorithm understands that change in position and orientation, and it simultaneously changes the position and orientation of the VR of AR object that is superimposed so that it looks like realistic. So I will show everything what I'm telling over here. So this, the virtual object then tracks the position and orientation of the image in real time so that the viewer's perspective on the object corresponds with the perspective on the target. The way the target moves, the way the position and orientation of the target changes in a similar manner, the position and orientation of the virtual objects also changes to make it realistic or appear it as a 
real world scene. Now the Vueforia software development kit supports a variety of 2D and 3D target types using markerless image targets also. But today we will be, I will be showing you marker based targets. Now, <clears throat> so how Vueforia detects these markers by using for a form of fiducial markers known as view mark. So what is basically recognized in image registration, the 3D position and 3D orientation. That is the position of that object in X, Y, Z and the orientation of the object, the role PTO, this 3D position and 3D orientation is, can be detected by Vueforia. So we can use this marker recognition software Vueforia and make AR application now so that we did not need to write a huge amount of codes in Unity 3D. And the good part is Vueforia is also free for development and learning. Only if we are going to make a commercial application, commercial app, then only Vueforia is chargeable. Otherwise, Vueforia is completely free. So with this Vueforia and Unity 3D, we can develop lots of AR applications and we can go on learning and teaching AR and VR. Now, so we, I will be using Vueforia and Unity 3D. So Vueforia will be performing marker recognition and Unity 3D will be dealing with the augmented reality application development uh, or environment development. Now the thing is there should be a interlinking, a linking between the Vueforia and the Unity 3D. Otherwise, when Vueforia will, the computer vision algorithm in Vueforia will detect the particular marker, how it will send the information to Unity 3D. So that is why Vueforia provides application programming interfaces or APIs in C++, Java, Objective C++, .NET languages, through an extension to Unity Game Engine. So Vueforia provides an extension to Unity Game Engine. So whatever uh, computer vision algorithm is there, we can train that computer vision algorithm and we can download the model as an extension of Unity 3D, uh, Unity 3D package. And then we can use that package in Unity 3D. So this is done by the application programming interfaces, which I will show you. In this way, the software, the Vueforia software development kit supports both native development for iOS. You can develop, develop your application for uh, iPhones, Androids. So it also enables the development of AR applications in Unity that are easily portable to both platforms. So now first, let us start with Vueforia software. And how can we uh, use the Vueforia software for tracking a particular marker or tracking a particular target? The first part is whenever we want to use Vueforia, first we have to create an account in Vueforia. So for that purpose, what we have to do, we have to register as I will be showing you in this video. So please confirm if you can see this video that I am showing to you. Is the, is my, is the video visible? Yes, sir. The video is visible, no? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, so we can search Vueforia in Google and where we have to go, we have to go to Vueforia developer portal. In this Vueforia developer portal. Now, whenever we go to this Vueforia developer portal, this particular page will open. What we have to do is, so in this particular development page, you can find a lot of informations about Vueforia software. Now in this page, there will be two options. One will be login and one will be register. So for first time use, you have to 
register by giving necessary information in Vueforia. So what are the necessary information Vueforia asks for during registration? So it's base, very basic general information like first name, last name, where you are, country of residence, all those things. So you can just fill up all those application, all those uh, informations, and then you can click on create account. Now, once you click on this create account, an email will be sent to the email ID you have provided. Now, whenever you will open your email and will click on that particular email link, then your Euphoria account will be activated. So this was the email link to complete the registration when I'm clicking it. So it says your account has been successfully created. So <clears throat> with, a, with a username and password. Now, whenever this account is created, we can click on login. And when we click on login, it will ask for the email address and password that we have given during registration. So we have just to provide the email address and password and we click on login. Now, once we log in, so this page will open, which is named as license manager. So that means the username has already came and it is giving an option for logout. So that means the account has already been configured or created. Now it's the time for the next configuration of view for you. Just a minute, my computer has got hand. Now, once the account configuration part is done, the next we will move on to license configuration. This bar is really annoying. So this will be license configuration. Now, in case of what we have to do in license configuration, so whenever we are creating an AR application, for each and every AR application, there may be one target image, or there can be multiple target images. We may track only one image, or we may uh, train the Vueforia software computer algorithm, computer vision algorithm to detect multiple images. So for each and every target image, the, there will be a unique ID. That means there will be a unique license. So that is why that creation of that unique license is basically down, done in this license manager portion. Now, let me show you the procedure to do it. Now, whenever we have logged in view for the license manager portion will open, which will tell us that create a license key for your application. So for each and every application, there will be a unique license. So how we will create a license? We have to click on this get development key. So whenever we click on this get development key, the license creation page will open. Now here it says add a free development license key we have to give a particular unique name. So this, for each and every application, there will be a unique target and there will be a unique license name associated with it. So we have to give a license name. So I am giving the name as AR Workshop Demo. So this is the license name I am giving, AR Workshop App. Now we can say from see from here, the license key type is develop so the license is developmental type development type price is no charge recommended users 1000 times per month view marks is 100 which i will show you what are view marks 
So you, we can focus on this, that this is free of cost. So this is a free development license key. So with that, after giving the name, we have to click on this checkbox and confirm. So once we click on confirm, the license will be created and it shows the type is developed and the status is active and the date of creation of the license is being shown over here. Now, after this part is done, what we have to do, we have to click on the license name. So when we will click on the license name, the license will open. Now, when we click on the license name, this particular license with this particular unique name will open. And it is telling, please copy the license key below into your app. Now, this is the license key, unique license key for the particular application which we will be developing in Unity. So what we have to do, we have to copy this license key and we can paste it in Notepad and we, can we have to place this file with the license key where we have to place this file exactly where we want to place all other files which are related to this AR application development. So I will be storing this license key in the form of text document and I'll be storing it in the folder where we want to, where I want to store all other files which are required for AR application. So I'm going into the VR workshop folder and I'm saving license key as workshop demo app. Now the license configuration part is done. Now once the license configuration is done, the next step is target configuration. What does target configuration stands for? So let me show you. So after license manager, once we have created the license, we will click on this target manager. Now, when we click on this target manager, the target manager configuration page will open. And here it is telling use the target manager to create and manage databases and targets. Now here, there is no database because no target image has been uploaded. So from this, you can understand that here, what we will be doing, we will be uploading the target image which we want the AR application to track. So I have already shown you the image of the drawing copy, which was in my home. The image of the drawing copy, I will be using that one as a target image. So I will be adding that target image in this portion. So how to upload that target image in this target manager? So we have to click on this add database. Now, when we click on this add database option, a page with create database will open. Similar to the license manager, we have to give the database name and this will be a unique name different from the license name what we have provided. I am giving the database name as AR workshop demo target. So the license was AR Workshop Demo App and the database name here I'm giving is AR Workshop Demo Target. And the type we will select it as device because we want to run this AR application in a particular device. There are other options like Cloud and Viewmart, which I'm not going now. So we will click on Create. And a target database will be created. The type is device, but see here, the targets is being shown as zero because still now I have not uploaded any target image. So how we will do that? I will click on this AR workshop demo target name of the database. So whenever I click on this particular target name, here an option will come, which is known as add target because no targets are there. So I will click on this add target and I will select the particular image of the marker and I will upload it. 
So when I click on this add target option, it asks that what will be the target type. We have already uh, discussed that Vuforia can track 2D planar images as well as 3D objects. But in my application, we, I will be detecting the target image, which is a planar image of my drawing copy. So that is why we will be selecting this single image option. Now, next is file. So here I will click on browse. So here, Euphoria is asking for asking me for that particular target image, what I have, which I have stored in my computer as a JPG or PNG file. Now I will select that particular image. I will click on open, and the particular target will be uploaded in Euphoria. So till now it has not been uploaded. It is asking another option as width. So the width I will be entering as one. Why? Because the I want the size of the target and the size of the virtual content, augmented con virtual reality content to be of same size. So that is why we will set the width as one. So now we will click on add so that we can upload the target image to Euphoria. Now, once that particular image is up, target is uploaded, now this time it will say the target single image. Now there is a rating and the status is processing. Now why processing? Processing means the computer vision algorithm in Vuforia is getting trained with the particular target image which I have uploaded. You can select any target image of your own choice. And you can upload the target image in Vuefory in a similar manner. So first, the training of the computer vision algorithm will be done. And then we will be able to download the trained model which we will be using in Unity. Now, what does this rating stands for? Now, there is the rating section is blank. Now, once the processing is complete, the training is complete, then we will see it will be a rating will be assigned. Now, whenever I'm again, uh, I have clicked on the target image, the rating is five star. Now, what does this rating stand for? The rating is actually augmentability rating. So what does augmentability rating mean? The augmentability rating means how much augmentable the picture is or the target image is. That means how easily the computer vision algorithm in Vuforia or the AR app in the AR application will be able to detect this particular image. So whatever target image you want to use, just keep in mind the augmentability rating should be greater than, should be equal to or greater than four star. So that whenever we are showing Whenever the, uh, this target image to the computer or the uh, mobile phone, so the um, uh, AR application does not get confused with other images. It Im immediately recognizes this particular image among other images. So how this augmentability rating is calculated? It is basically calculated how much asymmetrical this particular image is. The more asymmetry in an uh, image is there, the more it will be easily detectable. And why we are doing, we are telling like this, because the more asymmetry, if, if we are using an image which is very symmetric, then if I rotate the particular image or in real world, when the target image will be rotated, the computer will not be able to understand the rotation. That means during image registration, the computer vision algorithm will not be able to recognize this rotation due to symmetry. And then though in real world, the tar target has changed orientation in virtual world or in AR application, the virtual content will not change its orientation. So there will be a mismatch in the orientation of the real target and the virtual target. So which will, which will uh, which will actually 
create a mismatch between the real world and the virtual world and break the immersiveness of the application. So it will not be realistic. So that is why whatever target image we want to use, there should be maximum asymmetry. Now, how Euphoria com computation algorithm detects the or understands this particular target image by using the view marks. What are those view marks? Let me show you. So these are the view marks the computer vision algorithm is using. So basically by detecting the orientation or distances between these view marks, this particular image is recognized because for each and every image, the orientation, position and orientation of this view marks or the distribution of these view marks will be different. So that is why by using those view marks, this computer vision algorithm detects this particular image. So up to this part, we have created the license and we have created the target image. Now next, we will come to Unity 3D project creation. So the Viewphoria part is done. Only one section is remaining. We have we have trained the uh, we have trained the Viewphoria uh, model with the target image, but we have already known that Viewphoria provides an extension of Unity package for the trained model. What we have trained. So whenever I have trained the computer vision algorithm, then what is the next step? The next step is I will download this particular trained model. So how we will download this particular trained model? So I will go back to the target manager and there will be the option of download database. So I will click on this download database. So what does this download database mean? Download database is the trained model, trained computer vision algorithm model of Euphoria, which will be downloaded as a Unity extension package. Now this trained model will be helpful for us to detect that particular target image, which we have uploaded in Viewphoria. So we will click on this download database and the target database will be downloaded. So an option will be coming. So what will be the development platform where we will be running this uh, Unity extension package? So we'll be using this train model in the U to develop an Unity application in Unity. So that is why we will click on this Unity editor option. So once we click on this Unity editor and we will click on download. So once we click on this download option, the trained model will be downloaded. And so if we see how it is downloaded, how it is downloaded, so we can see from here, it is a Unity extension package. So we have to, we have where we have to select this file and we have to paste it or we have to place this uh, trained model in the same folder where we have kept the license. So the license in Notepad as well as the trained model downloaded from Viewphoria as an Unity extension package should be kept in the same folder. Now the Viewphoria section is done. Next, what we will do is we will create a AR environment, AR application in Unity 3D. So how we will create an AR application project. So first, once we have downloaded in Unity 3D, I'm using the Unity 3D version as 2019.4.9F1, 64-bit version, 2019.4.9F1 version I'm using for development of application, you can use other applications. But af uh, so after 2020, there are a lot of changes has been made in this Unity software. So you can download the 2019 version on 2017 version also. You can also download 2020 version. You will get much more uh, comprehensive updates in Unity. So I'm using here 2019.49F1 version. So once I click on the Unity uh, 3D, the Unity software will open. So, we've, uh, so when we will start creating a new application, we will create on new because I'm creating a new project. So when I create on the new project, it will ask for a project name. Now this will be a unique name for a 
Unity project, I will give a project name over here and the location of the project will be the same folder where I have stored or we have stored the license as well as the train model. That is a database. The license has the database in the folder where we have kept in the same folder we have to create the project and the type will be 3D because we want to place a 3D object or we want to create a 3D air application and we'll click on create project. So once we click on this create project, the project creation will be started. Now, when the project creation project is created, this will be shown like this one, where there will be three options, untitled, because there is the project name we have given, but here is something which is shown in blank over here. This is known as scene. Scene means the environment where we will be creating the AR or VR application. Now, we have given the project name, but we have not given a scene name. There can be multiple scenes in a particular Unity. So we have not named the particular scene in Unity. That is why it is showing as untitled. Then there is a main camera and directional light for illumination. Now, once the project creation section is done, next what we have to do is we have to interface the license and database that has been downloaded from Unity, uh, downloaded from Vueforia in Unity. So that means we have to configure the license and database in Unity 3D. So how we will be doing it? So next, what we'll be doing, we'll be creating on file and we'll go to build settings. Now, what does this build settings is mean? Why do we need these build settings? Build settings basically uh, is deals with creating an Android application, iOS application, or PC-based.exe application. So in build settings, we select specific parameters, and then if we click on build, as the option is provided over here, we click select the option build, then automatically the AR application will be created. We don't need to write an AR um, Android uh, code or we don't need to use the Android Studio for writing those codes. So once we have completed making a particular AR application, if we click on build, the AR application or PC-based application will be instantly created. So that is why we have to come to these build settings and there will be a couple of things we need to set. So for that part, we have to go in this player settings option. Now in this player settings option, I'm clicking on Android because I want to create an AR application running in Android. So in player setting option, when we will click, there will be a panel opened at the right side. Here, we have to give some company name and product name. Why it is required? It is basically required because if we want to use this app as commercial purposes, then this thing is required. Otherwise, you can give any company name, any product name, what you want over here. So the important part, what we have to give over here is we have to give a product name and a company name. You can give any company name, any product name. If that doesn't matter until and unless you are creating an air application, uh, commercial application. Now after that part, we have to enable the Vueforia interface to Unity. So for that purpose, what we have to do is we have to scroll down and we have to come into a section which is known as XR settings. Now this XR settings option, there will be three checkboxes and the third checkbox may be, or we have to find where is this checkbox of Euphoria augmented reality. We have to check this checkbox in order to enable the Euphoria API in Unity. So once this part is done, we can we can give a name to our scene. I have given a name to our scene as AR workshop demo project, and we can just close the build settings. So the build settings portion is already done. Now, once the build setting is completed, now next, what we have to do, the next thing what we'll be doing is, so, there are there is two there are two types of cameras. One may be main camera, and in Vueforia, 
once I have enabled Euphoria, the Euphoria option will come and I will click on this game object and I will come in this Euphoria option and I will click on this AR camera. Because we need augmented, we are building an augmented reality application and for that purpose, we need AR camera. That means the phone camera will be treated as an AR camera. If we are using the application in phone or if we are using it in laptop or desktop, then the webcam will be used as an AR camera. So we have to enable this AR camera option. So I will click on AR camera. So when I click on it, it will give, tell, ask for an option to import some necessary files. So we will click on import and all the necessary packages related to AR application of this AR camera will be imported automatically in Unity. So once the AR camera is imported, we will just delete the main camera because we don't need the main camera now. We only need the AR camera. Now once the AR camera is done, I'm deleting the main camera. So once the AR camera is imported, we'll click on it. And there will be an option which will be showing as, when I click on AR camera in the downward section, it will show an option open view for your configuration. So we will click on this open view for your configuration option. So when we click on this open view for your configuration, it will ask for app license key. You can understand this is asking for the license which we have downloaded, copied and pasted in the notepad file from Vuephoria. So we have to now copy and paste the license key over here to add the license. So I'll go on to the folder. I will open the particular file. I will copy the whole license. And I will copy the whole license. I will paste the license in the view for your configuration app license key. So once the license is license I have pasted, now the next thing is what we have to do is now I have to import the database which has been downloaded as an extension package which we have downloaded as a, the trained model which we have downloaded from Vuephoria. So we have to import the package first in Unity. So for that purpose, I will click on assets. Then I will click on import package and custom package because there are other packages inbuilt for Unity. So I'm uh, importing a custom package. So I will select the custom package option. Now I will move on to the same folder where I have downloaded the extension you, uh, data, the database, and then I will select it and it will be imported in Unity. I'm selecting the particular file. And it will be imported. So I will click on import and it will be imported. That means the database of the API in the form of Unity extension package that has been downloaded from Euphoria, the trained computer vision model will be imported in Unity. Now, once the database is imported, again, we have to go into the open uh, AR camera Euphoria configuration. So we will go to the uh, Euphoria configuration and if we, uh, if we scroll down where we have paste the license, then at the database section, the particular database will be shown. So we will uncheck all other options and we will only select the database name. The database name was workshop, AR workshop demo target. So we will only select it, the database name which we have imported in Unity and we will click on activate. Once we click on this activate, the license and database in Unity will be completed. That means view for the R model is now interfaced with Unity. So Unity will now be able to detect the particular image. So what is the next step? The next step is to create the game object or the game scenario or the virtual reality scenario. So how we will do that? So here, what I am doing, uh, uh, creating as a game object is basically I will create a virtual queue and I want to place the virtual queue 
in real time. So that means the computer will augment the virtual queue on the real target image. So to do that one, what we I will be doing, first I will select game object and then I will go to view for ya. And I will click on image. Now it will, the image target thing will come as an option. Now what is image target? So you can think in the real world scenario, there will be a real target image which the phone camera will be detecting or the computer camera will be detecting. In the virtual world scenario also, there will be a virtual target, same as the real target and a virtual camera, which is the AR camera over here. So whatever is going in the real world, it will be exactly replicated in the virtual world. So in this image target, we have to upload the image of the target, what we have, what we want to use as a marker. So in the image target, what I will be doing is, whenever I click on image target, it is telling me the type is predefined, the database is empty now. Now I have to select the database. I will go, go to the image target, but before going to the image target, what we will be doing is here, I'm selecting the database empty. So we will click on this option as empty. Now it will, I have already uploaded the database. So he uploaded the database, so it will show the database. So whenever we, I select the AR workshop demo target, that was the database name, automatically the target image is uploaded into the tar image target. So you see here is the AR camera and here is the target image. So the AR camera will be visualizing the target image. So this is how we are instructing the Unity, uh, uh, Unity that when we are running the Unity 3D application, it will be instructing that the phone camera or the computer camera will be detecting the particular target image. So once the, we have uploaded the target image, we have to orient the camera so that it can visualize this virtual target. So we will change the orientation of the camera. So we can change by clicking on these arrows or here when we are clicking on this AR camera, the position and rotation from here also we can change. So I will be giving a rotation of 90 degree. Now, if you can see, whenever I give a rotation of 90 degree, the, in the camera preview, we, I can visualize the target. Now, if I move the camera a little bit upward, then the whole target image will be visible. So this is how we will make Unity to understand how to detect the particular target image. So now the AR camera is pointing towards or looking towards the AR target image. Now what we will do, the next thing is we will create a create the virtual object. Now what virtual object I'll be using over here? I want to simply place a virtual cube on the real target image. So that is why in the game object section, I will click on game object and I will go to the 3D object and I will select cube. So these are predefined models. So once I select cube, a cube will appear, which we can scale from this uh, or transform option or, and we can move this particular cube so that it is placed on the virtual target image. So let us first scale it. So I'm changing the scale to 0 0.5. That means the X axis is 0 0.5. Y axis is 0 0.5. That is 50% of the previous size and Z axis is also 0 0.5. So now a Q 50% of original Q I have formed. So we will, I will be placing it on the target image. Now we, one thing, we have to make this cube as a child of this image target. What does that child of this image target mean? Child of this image target means whatever happens to this image target, the same behavior will be copied into this cube. 
that means if this tar image target orientation changes the cube orientation will also change now here till now we have not made the cube as a child of this image target so first uh, I, we will orient the cube so once the orientation is done, we will select the cube option and place it on image target. We will just click and drag the cube onto image target and automatically it will be made as a child object. So now whatever behavior the image target happens, the same behavior will be reciprocated in the cube. And the cube looks very dull. So I will add some textures so that it looks a little bit more aesthetic. So I am adding, I will be adding some textures in the queue from the already available texture materials available in Vuephoria. So I will select a particular mark, Mars box texture. This Mars box texture. Uh, I will select the Mars box in the queue. So in the material section, I will click on this element zero, this option, and I will select the default texture of the material. Now, once I select it, we can say, we can see a cube has appeared and over the image target. Now the game object creation is done. Now it is time for some testing. Now this AR application when I'll be testing in this, I have created a .exe application in the PC. So whenever in the real world, I will show the object, real world object, or the real world image in real time, the computer, I want the computer to superimpose this virtual cube onto the real object. So let us see whether it performs in the similar manner or not. So we will click on this play button for testing. Now in real time, I am showing the image of my copy and automatically when the computer camera, laptop camera detects the image, it automatically superimposes this virtual Mars box onto the copy. And if we are using an AR glass, we will see that as box has been placed on the uh, object on the copy. And you can see the way I'm changing the orientation and position, the behavior of this virtual object is changing in the same manner so that it looks like our object really has been placed or pasted on the copy. So the way I'm changing it, the same similar behavior we can visualize in the virtual object. So till the time the image is visible, the drawing copy image is visible, the marker image will be detected. So this is an AR application where we, we are superimposing a virtual object uh, on the real world. So this is uh, a, uh, just a very beginner level uh, application we can develop. Now tomorrow I will show you how to animate, uh, how to animate uh, virtual objects we can add some animation to make it more realistic. So I will sh be showing you the animation. So now it is animating. We can add human models. We can make the humans walk. So I'm just showing you how to animate. I will show you the way we can animate AR objects or VR objects. And also uh, there are a couple of other things how we can use video files or media files as AR objects. So whenever a particular marker is detected, then automatically a video starts playing, which is uh, particularly useful for uh, industry 4.0 or training purposes. So that means whenever this particular marker is detected in real time, a video starts playing. Now that there is no AR object, 3D AR object, 
the AR object is now video. So this is particularly useful for training purposes. So a person who, are, who is wearing uh, the AR glass, whenever sees that particular marker, the video automatically starts playing and the sound automatically starts coming. So this is how we can superimpose media files in AR. And not only this, uh, tomorrow I will also show you how to interact with uh, AR uh, objects in real time, as well as uh, I will show you how to control virtual models from real world sensor data. So there will be a sensor and I will be sending the sensor values and controlling the behavior of the virtual object with the help of sensor data. So. Uh, for today, I conclude here and I request, I would request Professor Bhumik to continue. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Shabta. Okay, so you have introduced this Viporia software, okay, and uh, your 3D modeling uh, software. So how these two can be combined together uh, to make the VR model. And this is very interesting. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, at the background, the real objects are playing and at the uh, foreground, the virtual object is playing and the virtual object is basically it is tracking the movement of the real object. So wherever the real object is moving, the virtual object is able to track uh, the pointer of the marker. Okay, and uh, you have seen that whenever that uh, virtual object is tilted. Uh, the real object is tilted, the virtual object is also immediately it is tilted. And depending upon the configurations, okay, the angle at which you are looking into the real object, so the virtual object dimensions of the virtual object will automatically change based upon the, uh, the geometry of the objects. Okay, so basically it contains the geometrical information about the object and uh, whether it is isometric view, okay, based upon that type of views okay uh, so the object shape it will be decided so uh, we discussed about this theory part today and little bit of uh, demonstrations very simple demonstrations but sometimes this kind of simple demonstrations is very help helpful uh, to clear the doubt uh, of the participants and what i understand that as the mechanical department is organizing this event so most of the cases, the participants may be having a background of mechanical engineering. So that much of uh, means uh, for this kind of work here in the VR related work, we require a good amount of knowledge, the geometrical knowledge of the object and computational knowledge also. Computer knowledge is also uh, is highly essential uh, from the programming point of view. Okay. So, so we try to give you some sort of uh, basic information about this here in the beer and tomorrow also we will continue with this uh, uh, application site different types of applications of the air in the beer and i will also play with uh, play some video okay so that very uh, precisely and very accurately it has explained the the concept of the air in the beer what is the level of uh, means technological level of this air in beer and where it has been applied. So I have shown you only one application, how this air in the beer has been applied in the medical field, but there are other fields that are there, even it is used for the entertainment purposes, even there are a lot of, uh, I have a video which shows that how this air in the beer is used by the, by the industry people. So uh, we have to see that uh, how this particular technology can be used in the industry, industrial training purposes. So that I will show it tomorrow along with that we will make a AR VR model okay application based model that means uh, it, it's maybe like a mobile based of applications and uh, simple applications but how you will be able to control it so we will see that uh, we, will, uh, we will show you that if we will develop a VR model and the VR model will be controlled by uh, by accelerometers okay so accelerometer is one kind of sensors so by uh, by rotating the accelerometer in different directions, you will be able to control the virtual objects. Okay, and this virtual is object is basically it is related to the flight aircraft 
okay so it's maybe and uh, you can say that it may be a, a take off operations or it may be a landing operations okay or it may be a simple it is a um, straight line operation straight line movement of the uh, aircraft so how all these operations you can show it even shoptak will show you that how we can make a virtual environment which looks like a almost it is looks like a real time so that also we will show you tomorrow is there any question from the audience any questions any uh, questions sir, sir. or any suggestions from the audience sir uh, how are the cyber security challenges and regulatory concerns are met sir hello hello sir i am audible sir yeah yeah you are audible uh, how are the cyber security challenges and regulatory concerns are met sir i could not follow it what you are telling you are uh, security challenges and uh, regulatory concerns okay okay like uh, how are these being addressed sir uh, for security purposes yes sir how this technology can be used for security purposes okay now uh, you can see that the uh, different training uh, like say for example you know that uh, nowadays that uh, blims are used okay uh, sometimes it's maybe of an aero blims or maybe the quadcopter type of devices are used so when the quadcopter will move so how the object will be looked like so if you wants to see that one if you wants to feel that whenever the quadcopter will move at the sky then uh, what the quadcopter will look at the bottom so this kind of experience if you wants to get it so you can you can apply your this uh, ar and the vr concept for security purposes generally this uh, surveillance purposes or the security purposes this kind of um, uh, quadcopter type of devices are used so you can make the model of the quadcopter you can make a virtual model and you can make a virtual environment also okay and you can see that what the quadcopter if somebody is looking at the quadcopter or the images which is coming from the quadcopter how the quadcopter image would looks like so that experience you can get it automatically if you have a ar in the vr systems this way you can you can you can make it or if you wants to give some sort of training for security persons uh, say for example you wants to give a training to the security persons okay so that training also one can give it with the help of this ar and the vr systems same kind of systems which is used for uh, I, i have shown you for automobile okay training for the automobile or maybe for the training for the doctors i have shown one uh, that um, what i say that uh, um, virtual okay ar in the vr systems and where number of people are involved okay so same kind of training you can give it for the uh, for the security people also if you, if you wants to show that uh, if you wants to show the security people how the uh, the dangerous objects looks like or whether an object is a dangerous object or not so how um, uh, from from the outside just from the look how one can understand that whether a, a container or a parcel okay it is a uh, it contains some sort of uh, um, uh, objects which is uh, dangerous in nature so that kind of also training you can give it to the security people yeah, we have to think you, a sir. lot uh, we have to think a lot uh, regarding these applications okay so i will i will also think today also that uh, how this can be this ar and the vr concept can be extended for the security training for the security people also i will think i will think and if i get some sort of good solutions uh, tomorrow then i will also discuss with you thank you very much sir uh, thank you sir thank you sir dr bomik sir for getting time out sir to present this wonderful uh, presentation and anyway tomorrow we are going to have uh, another session from your side so whatever queries uh, which you may be having participants maybe Uh, sir will be uh, uh, sir will definitely will give you a solution